Thank you, Mr. President. And I rise. I'm going to uh, associate with the comments of the, of the thank yous. I won't go through each one. But Chairman Saul has always been very respectful, runs a uh, very respectful meeting. And I, I couldn't agree more with the fact that all the members, all the staffs, uh, working extremely, extremely hard. Everybody knows that if you're on the Senate Budget and Appropriations uh, Committee, you're going to be putting in a lot of hours, a lot of time. And we got want to also thank Office of Legislative Services for all the work that, that they did. Uh, for, first and foremost, I've heard a lot about a surplus, this windfall and surplus. New Jersey has no surplus. We have over $200 billion worth of unfunded liabilities that need to be addressed. So maybe we had a little bit of windfall from the fact that New Jersey has been overtaxing its, its residents for, for uh, way too long. And therefore, this, uh, a windfall came in. And thank goodness to the fact that the New Jersey residents supported their local businesses and went out and, and uh, we had a additional sales tax revenue because the administration wasn't helping. When they were holding on to the CARES Act money for over six months, and we, as a legislative body, on a bipartisan basis, put hundreds of millions of dollars on the desk of the governor, and it got vetoed. So unfortunately, more than one-third of our small businesses go down Main Street, that's every third building, they closed. That's families. That's people. That's mortgages they wouldn't be able to pay. Those employees, they wouldn't be able to pay. We could have gotten the money out on the street significantly quicker. Unfortunately, the administration used it for its own budget, a lot of it for its own budget purposes, and now you got the $2.4 billion in the CARES Act, and you got the $6.3 billion in the American Rescue Plan. That surprise, surprise is going out. Some of the money is going out just before an election. I, that, to me, it's not a surprise, which unfortunately there's been too many surprises. I'll just go back a couple of weeks ago and thank God Senator O'Scannon asked a question. But when did we expect to get the $6.3 billion? Lo and behold, everybody in the committee, both Democrat and Republican, were repulsed when we found out that the money was already in and nobody had been notified. You talk about the transparency. There's no transparency there. The other issue with respect to the, the bills, we rely very heavily on public input. We all have our, our specialties that we feel comfortable with, but it doesn't cover everything that's in the budget. And we rely upon public input to help us understand the needs of the people. Now, unfortunately, we really haven't seen a plan for the uh, uh, almost $11 billion to be spent. Now, the Republicans, back on June 7th, we did put uh, a plan forward for that $6.3 billion dollars that we had had received. And the issue of the debt defeasance. Listen, I've been a, an advocate of debt defeasance for a long time. We got plenty of it. You got the unfunded liabilities and you got obviously the bonded debt. But we're we're and I'll, I'll talk about this also on the on, on the bill itself. I'm a proponent of debt defeasance, but what we're being told is to trust an administration that quite frankly withheld information from us. The idea of the revenue forecasting. When the first things, when it all first started, we heard as far as 10 billion, then we heard as far as you know, 30 billion dollars, then it was back to 10. Then we, and we had said many times on the Republican side that we saw the revenue forecast and the revenue uh, was coming in better than expected. And unfortunately, the uh, the Supreme Court did agree to let the administration borrow up to what they could certify as a revenue shortfall. We all know today, we're talking about a windfall, that borrowing is absolutely unnecessary. 
And many times I'm told, they said, yeah, but it was a low-cost borrowing. You know what the lowest-cost borrowing is? That borrowing that you don't do. We paid expenses and fees for a borrowing that was completely, completely unnecessary. There's other things, a lot of structural changes that unfortunately haven't, haven't taken place. And I know it's nauseating for me to say it over and over again, and you guys probably, you're tired of hearing it, but we're not protecting, the administration is not protecting residents of New Jersey. And we're not just talking about nickels and dimes, we're talking about over a billion dollars. We have people that have been working in New Jersey the whole time, and according to the law, those days were supposed to be allocated to New Jersey, and hundreds of millions or billions of dollars should be coming to New Jersey, and our residents, over 400,000, many in the, in, obviously in, in, in the districts, you got Bergen County, you got Passaic County, you got Essex County, you got Hudson County, you got, Mill you got um, you know, Ocean and Monmouth, um, and even I used to commute into, in, into the city from, from Sussex County. They would receive an immediate tax cut. Immediate. And we have done nothing. And today, still, I checked this morning, we're still telling New York companies to withhold New York taxes on people working in New Jersey. That's the easiest thing we could have done and fixed right away. So there are many, many reasons we put out the plan that talked about, you know, eliminating the unemployment insurance increase. We hear that there's no tax increases. There is a huge tax increase coming next week to our businesses. Yes, we did help as a legislator on a bipartisan basis to spread it out over a three-year period, but it's still a half a billion dollars. So there's many, many things that we can go on. I know a number of my members will talk about it. I really do appreciate the respect that we give to one another. We completely disagree on many, many aspects, but we do it in a, in a professional, professional manner. Um, I appreciate all the hard work, but there's too many things that are in this budget that we could have fixed already. I, I, I just think about those hundreds of millions of dollars that we could fix with the governor did so many executive orders, we could have done something immediately to help over 400,000 residents and help every resident of New Jersey with the additional resources that would come here as opposed to helping New York primarily in New York, but there are other states as well. So, Mr. President, I want to thank you very much for the latitude you give me. I really do appreciate the, uh, the camaraderie on, on the meeting. We, as I said, we disagree on many, many things, but we do it in a, in a respectful, respectful manner, and I appreciate the chairman and how he conducts his, his meetings and how we, um, you know, uh, talk with each other. So, but we got many things we got to work on to make New Jersey a lot more competitive, a lot more efficient, and a lot more fair. So I urge my colleagues to vote no.